वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंड ऑफ फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ माइक्रोमोटर एट जीरो फाइव वन वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो एल बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू टाइमर्स एंड काउंटर्स ऑफ एट जीरो फाइव वन माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स ही आर विद एट जीरो फाइव वन वी हैव टू टाइमर्स ऑफ सिक्सटीन बिट्स ही आर बोथ ऑफ दिस टाइमर्स आर अप काउंटर्स सो ही आर दिस टू टाइमर्स कैन बी यूज एज अ टाइमर एज वेल एज काउंटर see when these timers are used by internal clock at that time you can say that is working as a timer but when these timers are used by external clock at the time that is working as a counter see external clock means what here with respect to external clock it will count how many clocks are coming that's why you can say it is working as a counter but when clock is given by microcontroller at 051 at the time it will work as a timer now i'll explain you how exactly all these timers and counters are working inside 8051 step by step so my dear students here 8051 is having two 16 bits timers t0 and t1 that is working as up counters remember this 16 bits timers are working as up counters this t0 and t1 that is further divided into 8 bits of resistors t0 is divided into th0 and tl0 and t1 is divided into th1 and tl1 you see this t0 of 16 bit timer that is divided into th0 and tl0 th0 is higher byte and tl0 is lower byte t1 is divided into two 8 bits resistor th1 and tl1 TH1 is higher byte and TL1 is lower byte. Now I'll explain you how to load count. You see, I have already told you this T0 and T1 that is working as up counter. Up counter means what? Count will increase with respect to clock. So here, my dear students, these timers are up counter, and with respect to clock, it will increment by one. So once you give one clock, it will increment by one. That is how it is working, right? so when it reaches to its maximum value maximum value of 16 bits is how much f f f f so after that it will roll back to 0 0 0 and during that it will generate timer overflow interrupt in interrupt i'll explain you we will be having two internal interrupts by timer one interrupt is generated by t0 and second interrupt is generated by t1 so that is happening when you reaches to fffff count and when you roll back to 0 0 at that time this timers are generating timer overflow interrupt here my dear students when you want to load the count for example i want to count nine values then you will have to load it as per maximum value that is fffff minus value which we want to count about plus 1 why plus 1 the reason is this timer overflow interrupt that will happen when you have roll from F F F F two zero 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 zero. So plus one that we need to add because of this. So here, my dear students, you will be counting value as per incrementation with respect to clock. And when you want to load that at that time, it should be maximum F F F F minus value plus one. Let me give you one example. For example, as if you want to count nine, then your count should be loaded as per F F F F. Minus nine plus one, so that value should be F F F seven hex. So here, this F F that I need to load in higher value, so it could be T H zero or it could be T H one, and F seven that I need to load it inside T L zero or T L one. Let us consider T zero as a timer. So what I'll do is I'll load this value inside timer zero. So for that. Move T H zero has F F hex means I have loaded this higher byte of timer zero with F F right, and by having move T L zero comma hash F seven hex, then that lower byte of timer zero that I have loaded with F seven hex. Now what will happen is this count that will increase with respect to clock. So as clock is given. One by one clock, it will be incrementing one by one. Once it reaches to FFF, 
it will be roll back to 0 0 0 and during that it will generate timer overflow interrupt here my dear students this count can be loaded in t0 or t1 right both of these timers will increment after every clock now i'll explain you how we decide whether this is timer or counter so i have already told you my dear students this value of count that will increase with respect to clock but as if this clock is provided by 8051 you can say it is working as a timer but as if this clock to this count if it is given by external signal then you can say that is working as a counter in 8051 we have two pins for external clock to timers one pin is therefore t0 and second pin is therefore t1 that is merged inside port 3 here my dear students if clock to the count is given by internal clock then you can say it is a timer but as if clock is given by external clock on t0 or t1 pin then you can say it is working as a counter here my dear students to configure this timer or counter we need to configure t mode resistor that i'll explain you in next video how to configure a t mode resistor but by configuration of t mode resistor we can decide whether we want to work it as timer or counter here tc bit of t mode resistor that will decide whether we are configuring that as a timer or a counter here how timer and counter works let us try to understand that so first of all my dear students we need to load the value of count inside t0 or t1 you can use any of these two timer right so you will be loading count how to load count maximum value minus the count which we want to calculate plus one that is how we will be loading the value of count right after that what will happen with respect to clock this count will increase one by one and when it will reaches from fffff to 000, 000 at that time it will be generating timer interrupt overflow flag so here tf0 or tf1 that will be making it to 1 that is what timer interrupt bits right so that will generate interrupt in 8051 whenever this interrupt is getting generated at the time well defined vector location is there with 8051 so program control that will get transferred to isr address and when it jumps over here at the time 8051 will make this bits to 0 before it jumps to isr address once it jumps to ISR address, it will execute program which is written at this ISR address. That is user defined program, right? And once you complete that program, at last you will be executing RETI instruction and by which you will be coming back to main program over here. So that is how this entire process is happening. First, you will be loading the count with respect to clock, it will increase when it reaches to fffff it will roll back to 000 and here when it does that at that time it will generate timer overflow flag which will be equals to 1 that indicates there is an interrupt inside 8051 and when this interrupt is generated at that time it should jump to isr address before that it will make this bits to 0 then when you execute that isr program at last you will be writing reti instruction to come back to main program here my dear students this tf0 this bit is there regarding interrupt of timer 0 and tf1 that bit is there regarding interrupt of timer 1 when you will be observing this interrupts are coming at that time there are well defined isr address for timer 0 well defined isr address is 000b hex and timer 1 which is indicated by tf1 bit that is giving you isr address at 001b hex so these locations are there at which there will be program control transfer after generation of interrupt as per count rolls from fff to 000 hex so this is how entire process is happening inside timer and counter of 8051 microcontroller i hope it is clear to you still if any confusion is there just post that in comment box i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video